Welcome everyone, this is Zanta. Today's video is on what's new in Revit 2024, specifically graphical user interface updates and interface changes. Here I have AutoCAD Revit 2024 open, and we're going to take a look at what has changed, starting with the home page, if you will, of Revit. You'll see immediately you've got some new sample shortcuts for sample files in architecture, structure, and MEP as well. On the left-hand side, Autodesk Docs is here, Recent Files is here, and now My Insights is here as well. So if I click My Insights, I can start to see the analytics of what I'm working with and how I'm using my commands. Let's look at the particular file I have open. Um, I have a Revit model open from the cloud, and we're going to go through what looks different. And we're actually doing this uh, not just live, but for first time ever. So here I am. I'm looking at it carefully. I'm going to go from the upper left corner down to the lower right corner. What I'm noticing immediately are the icons have been updated to have a bit more character and flavor. So synchronize and modify settings, command sync to central. The icon looks different. The export to PDF looks different. The activate control and dimensions looks different. Your 3D house symbol for the default 3D view also looks different. Your ribbon, it's, let's go to say a 3D view so we can get the ribbon to show a lot more commands in color. So if you're in a particular view, by the way, that doesn't give you the ability to to create certain contents like a starting view, you'll see those commands are grayed out like wall, door, window, component. They're all grayed out. So I'm switching over to a um, 3D view of this model. And if it takes a while, it's because your visual style is set pretty high. Um, and mine in this model are all set to realistic. Now, taking a look at the interface again on the um, ribbon, some of the icons look a little bit clearer and sharper. There's a lot less uh, fuzziness from what I can tell. There's a good bit of contrast. The icons, the mullion icon looks a little slightly different. Um, the ceiling icon looks a little bit different, so they've got some shading going on with a lot of these commands. Let's head over to Structure tab. Yes. So like the foundation panel, the commands, they have some highlighted um, colorization as well. Heading over to all the other tabs, the ones that I typically use the most, uh, like look at the insert tab, the link panel, all the link little symbols are gold color and very, very easy to see. Even the point cloud file image looks much better, that command. Manage links looks very nice and new too. In the annotate tab, so what I can tell, yes, it looks like the commands are and the icons are more colorized, has more contrast, uh, easier to see. Taking a look at the options, we can set under colors a new dark theme. So you can either go dark, light, or use system settings. Let's switch to dark just so we can see what it looks like. And as you can see, the um, dark aspect shows up. I guess if you're used to it being in white for so long that switching it to black makes it a bit harsh to look at, which sounds a little strange because dark Interfaces are supposed to be meant to be not so harsh on your eyes. It does look like it's a pretty good job, especially with the contrast of the white lettering over the darkish uh, background. It's not completely black. And over here, it's not completely black either. Uh, if we look at it from the standpoint of how does the materials look in a blackish background and how it contrasts, it's a little... Looks a little muddled to me. I guess it's just because I'm not used to it, Revit being in a black background like AutoCAD. So let's go ahead and switch it back to the 
use system settings. And I have also noticed too that when you're switching from a dark theme to a light theme, the 3D views that have realistic seem to take quite a bit of time to regenerate and change it to that particular theme setting. Let's give it a second. The project browser has been updated. You see you have positive and negative hyphen marks um, to expand all of the different uh, categories. And you still have your square that shows you whether the view is filled and on a sheet versus a view that's not filled and not on a sheet. Uh, and also, if you have by chance schedules that have been broken up and each individual portion is on a sheet, they'll be colored. And so everything will be colored. If by chance one of these partial room schedule views is not on a sheet, then this main square would be half filled. It doesn't look like they've made any updates to the view cube or the toolbar from what I can gather. The view control toolbar at the bottom has been updated quite a bit. I see that the visual style icons have been updated and now there's a new textures graphical display option as well. So if we switch to this to textured, then if you have material mapping assigned to your library and to the particular object, it'll put that image mapping system material onto the physical model. They've updated icons for the crop region, showing or not showing and enabling or disabling them, blocking the 3D view, uh, temporarily hiding or isolating that icon has also been updated. I'm gonna switch this to hidden line just so that it's a little faster and easier for us to work with. The work share icon has also been updated. The reveal constraints icon has also been updated as well. On the properties panel, it doesn't look like it's been updated other than visually seeing the information sharper and clearer. If we look at the status toolbar, work sets icon has been updated. The rest doesn't look updated. I do know that another thing that they've done from the standpoint of graphical user interface it are the resizing of a lot of windows. So for example, if I have the open command dialog box, I can resize. So any box that has these little dots at the corner, lower right corner, that's to let you know you can resize them. If we insert a Revit link, this box can be resized. We import in a CAD file. This can be resized. Other resizable windows are going to be the decal types dialog box. So here, clicking decal types, we can see that this window is now resizable. It doesn't seem to adjust the size of the preview image though. Uh, spell checker dialog box. So if you're in the annotate tab of the ribbon um, and you do spell checker, um, if you have any errors, that spell checker window will open up and that can be resizable. The legend view dialog box. So let's create a legend. I don't have a legend. That box is resizable. The drafting view dialog box as well. So let's head over to drafting view. So this dialog box can be resized. New plan dialog box. So if you say floor plan, this box can be resized. So there's several. Uh, save selection dialog box, load selection dialog box, detail levels dialog box, halftone underlay, create groups. So there's a good laundry list of updated uh, dialog boxes that you can resize. Uh, if you watch my Revit 2024 video on just the PowerPoint portion, there is a PowerPoint slide that is under the this optimization category of the PowerPoint presentation, and it will give you a list of all the different new resizable dialog boxes. They do have, obviously, clicking the icon here under View tab, Windows Panel, Canvas Theme, 
and you can immediately switch it from dark to light, just the canvas, not the whole entire interface. And I guess that's it. Well, thank you very much for watching the video.